Thanks for tuning in. This is Robert Luther Hill coming with another art book video. These are my favorite art books of the day right now. Some that I purchased, some that I got from the library, even my own book, and I just love sharing them. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so these two books um, are from the film Tekken Concrete, or they're based on the, the artwork for the film. Uh, which is based on an older manga called uh, Black and White, or Kuro and Shiro. And the, the black one is all mostly pencil drawings, and then the white one is mostly color. And these books my wife got for me a while back are mostly Shinji Kimura. I don't read Japanese, so I can't tell you all of the artists that are in it, but I believe he was the art director for it. These are some of the, the color ones in here. But... It's really incredible how he kind of builds out this city, like all of the the trains and the, the monuments like this, for example. This is like the two characters on top of this huge building. And it feels like a metropolis, like New York or, or Paris or Tokyo or something. And it's just really, really intricate drawings, great perspective. Just really, if you're someone who works on layout or story development, it's, it's incredible to see like these little things where you see the drawings for the park. Yeah, I just spent many hours staring at this. this it's so incredible the his, his drawing, his draftsmanship. But that's, that's this one. It's, it's mostly drawing. Incredible, incredible drawings. Highly rent. This is an old one too, so you should be able to get your hands on it. I highly re recommend checking that one out. That's the black and white one. And then the color one is just gorgeous. You get to see those same drawings with coloring. It's, yeah, it's just beautiful. And the angles too, like this really great cinematography with, with illustration right here. Because it's at a low angle looking up and it's tilted like a Dutch angle. Really beautiful, beautiful stuff. So much inspiration. And so here's that same, the drawing, but now painted. And then you see the animation cells here. One thing uh, the team or Shinji Kimura use a lot is uh, green and red. So a lot, those are, um, I believe they're complementary colors. But um, in fish eye lens as well, like you'll see a lot of green and red. And Shinji Kimura is an artist who works for Studio 4C who produced this. So in a lot of their films where he's art directing, you'll see a lot of green and red. Just incredible detail. I mean, like anime that are uh, 2D are just known for having really incredible paintings of their backgrounds, but dude takes it takes it to a whole other level. It's like so much detail. This too, I love this, the use of red and green. But yeah, check this out. If you haven't seen the art books for Tekken Concrete, watch the film, it's really dope. All right, so this one is called Supreme Glamour. It's a big art book um, published by, I forget what the name of the publisher is, but it's written by one of the members of the Supremes. This, this is Diana Ross, this is Mary Wilson, and I forget her name. But this is a book about their wardrobe, like some of the outfits that they would wear. And it is really stunning just to see all of the designers and the historical photos. I mean, folks gotta remember back in the day, Supremes were a huge, huge group. And the mixture of historical photos and the outfits and words by one of the members of the group is, is just really beautiful. 
The book is designed gorgeously. I love seeing these old photos of the group. And for someone who's, who's into fashion, not only do you get this, a little bit of background on the group, like old pictures and stuff like that, but you get to see some of the garments. Like they'll zoom in and show you some of the details, the sequins, the many, many, many custom outfits that they had for touring, for TV appearances, for magazines. Just beautiful, beautiful gowns. Just This is a gowns at a glance. This is like all of the ones that are in here. Just so many beautiful colors. And you'll see them on TV performances wearing these pictures. Really, really beautiful book about music, design, photography. Yeah, I really recommend checking that one out. Especially if you like fashion design or know someone who digs it. And then it goes into a little bit about like the group's history after Diana Ross leaves. And yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Thames and Hudson, Supreme Glamour. This right here is a sketchbook of the artist uh, Juanjo Guarnido. He's a Spanish artist. He's worked in comics and uh, animation. And he's famous for the Black Sad series as his character, Black Sad. That's how I came across his work. But this right here is a, a signed book. It's, it's, it's basically a, a, a sketchbook, like drawings, paintings, him kind of testing things out. And his, um, his ability to draw like facial expressions and wrinkles and folds in the clothes and like action is just unbelievable. I love looking at his Black Sad series and just seeing how he how he does it. He because he worked in animation, he, he really captures movement, action, like a shot that's a drawing that would normally just be one moment feels like several. He's a really, really talented illustrator. Here's one where he does a bunch of he did this animated short with this band. He draws a bunch of the band members. We're like, look at this, for example. His attention to detail of making this, I think it's like an orangutan. Just look really cool. <laughs> the blues playing orangutan. So yeah, check out. Check out Juanjo's work. So many beautiful drawings. This is a book by my homie A.V. Jetter. She's a, a cartoonist and author from Oakland. This was really cool, she, she signed it for me. This has some uh, drawings from during COVID times. She uses a lot of traditional media, markers, ink, pencil. She does drawings of, of famous people. She does comics. In this one, she kind of talks about uh, grief, like in her life, losing a loved one, her mom. And then like a really rough trip to the to the hospital. And then she has lots of drawings, like sketchbook drawings. And it's really awesome for a young artist to see um, someone's work, just, just how they do their thing. And an array of different things, a lot of portraiture. She did a comic that's called Nothing Good At Happens After 4 a.m. At 4 a.m., excuse me. She has these really beautiful portraits of uh, people for Black History Month. Some people you know and some people you likely have never heard of. And I, I love how she put together this this art book. It's definitely worth checking out. This is A.V. right here. Shelter in Place sketchbook drawings, A.V. Jetter. This right here is a book by artist James Gurney. James Gurney is a traditional artist who paints in casein, gouache, and watercolor. And this is a, a book that he wrote and illustrated called Dinotopia. It's a really famous one of his. And these have just some incredible paintings and story in it. Do used to uh, illustrate stuff for National Geographic and try to do what was historical paintings of dinosaurs or creatures or places and 
he really puts that skill to test in this book because you have a mixture of little spot illustrations, full spreads, um, paragraphs, artifacts. And it's just a really dope story about this magical place where dinosaurs never went extinct and they coexist with humans. And so you'll have like these things like this where it shows you the, the interior of a building and where dinosaurs live, their language, uh, how they are born, their, their eggs, some of their anatomy, and then some of the people who live with them. And it's, it's just super realistic and, and hyper-realistic in some places and also just really imaginative. He really delves into not only like the language and the things that people eat and the things that they wear, but you, you can just tell he put a lot of care into the, the light and the shadow and the texture of, of all the people and places and things. I saw a video where he talks a little bit about some of the models he made too for lighting to make sure that the lighting looked cool. It's a really incredible painted book. It's a really cool one for, especially if kids like dinosaurs. So much detail. Let's see, like this one, his full spreads. That's a dope book to check out. It's James Gurney. This right here is a book of murals that were painted in Oakland during uh, the summer of 2020 after George Floyd had been killed. And um, besides doing illustration, I'm also a muralist, so I have some work in here. But this is published by um, Nomadic Press in Oakland, and uh, it's a con collaborative project with uh, Eastside Arts Alliance. And it just has an incredible array of murals that were painted, but also writing. Um, lots of, of pieces in here about the importance of doing work for movements or uh, protests and poetry. This is a piece that I worked on here with Benta Oyafemi. It's a mural that says Black Lives, and on it, on the side, it says. Uh, transformations and reparations. There's just a lot of young artists in here. Oh geez, here's the homie Kina. Some interviews in here, like the interview with Emory Douglas. There's so much art that happened that, this is my, my sister Cece Carpio. There was so much art that happened that summer. It was really a, an outpouring of love for George Floyd, but also um, people expressing their frustration about, you know, the injustice as you said, our salons. So many great pieces in here. Sometimes the uh, people's messages were very, um, very timely too, very political, very right on point. Sometimes people were just kind of getting out their, their feelings, but many times, the messaging was right on point. Here's one from my crew, the Trust and Struggle Collective. And it's really important. It's really important to use your artwork to say something about what's going on, to reflect the times. And in this, you can read some of these poems too. Arnaldo Garcia, Sonia Sanchez, like so many great works. It's a really dope book. It's um, a mixture of words and images. But it's a dope one to check out, Painting the Streets. This right here is a, an art book by Derek Lofman. I met Derek over the summer at TCAF and traded books with him. Um, this is, he's done multiple art books, but this is one with a lot of character designs, character drawings. He's, he's really good at color and shape and, and characters and emotion, action. Definitely one of the artists I like to look at when I'm working on my characters. Get the feel that he's like made for, for comics for sure. we will do some of these too, which is like environments. It's cool to see some of the, the thinking as far as like how he separates color. There's like the dark, medium and light tones. 
to kind of give depth to a scene or a background. Need like some planning. Really beautiful, beautiful colors. I like how he has like the grayscale version and then adds color to it. The dude is, dude is ridiculous with it. Yeah, check out Derek Loffman's work if you haven't already. He does comics, art books, lots of things. This is a really dope art book by artist Claire Windling. She's a French artist, I believe, and it's uh, published by Stuart NG Books out in LA. Uh, Claire's book, she has some paintings, but mostly drawings, really incredible drawings. In this book, I think she was redoing some old ones, so you'll see a lot of duplicates. Sometimes it's the original version is better, sometimes the one she redraws better. But I love her quality of line and um, all the animals that she draws. Um, sometimes like a mixture between human and animal or alien creatures. She works in, I think, comics and illustration and uh, some animation as well. Just some amazing drawing ability. I think I heard about her through schoolism. I love seeing um, her drawings. It's so beautiful what she does with the, the human figure or animal figures. Yeah, this is probably almost 100 pages. But check out this book, Claire Windling. This is a dope book right here by published by Rafa, written by Marlon Le Moncrief. And it's all about black folks, mostly British, I would say, uh, but black folks in general who are cyclists in BMX or road racing or mountain biking. And it's just kind of a really great, well-designed book that has pictures, history. This is Muhammad Ali on a bike, for example and written accounts of what it's like to ride, what it's like to train, some of the history of racism that black cyclists have faced in this very white dominated sport. And I think it's, it's just a really beautiful book if you like riding bikes, if you like racing, to see some of the, the photographs and the history and just all the names of the historic and current cyclists, some of which you might know, like Major Taylor or this brother right here. I believe this is uh, Nelson Vales. There's some people you might know. Here's Major Taylor. But some are, are very lesser known names. And it's just, it's, um, it's unthinkable what folks have to go through to even just get respect or be treated equally in this sport. And I think some of it is just a testament, and here's Justin Williams, um, to the perseverance black folks have in the face of so many, if facing this kind of uh, challenge in so many different fields. And I think if you're entering a field, no matter who you are, you're gonna have some difficulty, but to be a black person in many of these sports is, is tough. And it's not just a <laughs> one person or an isolated incident, it's like this is, um, across the the world mostly in europe and the united states and latin america what it's like for these folks to ride i'm not a cyclist but i love riding bikes both as a kid and as an adult and it's just really dope to see how he compiled all these folks in this book so shout out to rafa and marlon for doing this check it out black champions and cycling all right, this right here is called Maestra Peace. And this is a historic mural at the Women's Building in San Francisco. And one of my teachers, uh, Juan Alicia, is one of the, the artists in this book, along with uh, Miranda Bergman, Edith Boone, 
Susan Elk Cervantes, Amira Desai, Yvonne Littleton, and Irene, Irene Perez. And this is published by Heyday Books in, in Berkeley. This is like a really thick book. I don't know if you can tell, but it has like a, a soft shimmery texture to it. Really, really well done book. This is my mom's book actually. And in it, you kind of get some beautiful photographs of the mural. Um, this this mural is what four, three or four stories tall, and I remember walking past it as a kid in the in the Michigan district. And in here you have um, talking about making the mural, like detailing all the different pieces of it, and then just some of the the artists like has a forward by Angela Davis. It's a really really incredible book thick thick coffee table book and if like this for example this page details all of the, the the people who are on there some of them are community members people from the area and some of them are well-known um, artists or activists like Rigoberta Minchu so much detail went into this mural and then you know they painted this a long time ago and then they went back and repainted it so it got restored just a really monumental piece. This building too is like one of the, I don't know if it's one of the first, I think it's one of the first dedicated to women and gender non-conforming. And there's a piece by Leticia Hernandez, this is a homie, uh, dedicated to women. So all types of services, resources, workshops. It's a really historic place in the Mission District. And the Mission District itself is really historic in terms of its art and culture and people and the diaspora of people, the mixture of cultures. Like, just look at this detail. This is my te my teacher, y'all, Juana Alicia. Just incredible details. This piece is on the, the inside of the building. And you get to see some of these historic pictures of all these women who just kicked ass, like knocked this one out of the park. Here's Mira. I got to work with her and Juan Alicia recently restoring a mural. It takes a lot of work to make a mural. And this is just a really, really important historical book chronicling that work. We get to see these women who are moms and grandmothers now. Get to see some of the other work by some of the other artists. There's Miranda, this is a homie. OG in the art world. To see some sketches and drawings. Yeah, check it out if you get a chance, Maestro Piece. So this right here, this is my art book. Uh, I've been wanting to do an art book for a long time, seeing people in animation and comics and uh, other fields do them and I work mostly in kids' books, illustration, some public art. So this is my art book. It's 130 pages of characters. You can see the contents right here. Characters, short stories, sketchbook stuff, uh, Black History Month stuff, type. And this is laid out by my wife, Joy. And in it, you just get to see some of the characters I've been drawing over the years. I mostly work in traditional media, watercolor, gouache, ink some short stories and some of my sketchbook stuff here so I get to see some of the detail If you follow my work, you've seen some of this before, but there's some tidbits in there that you might not have seen. So this, for example, is Paris, really dope rapper from San Francisco, a lot of political and funk together. And there's a bunch of Women's History Month as well. This is Pura Verpre, Asian American History Month. I try to fit a bunch of stuff in here. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And in the back, there's some tutorials as well. And um, 
I thank all of the, that's me working in the studio. I just thank all of the people. There's tons of people that contributed on Kickstarter to make this happen. So thank you all. And I got some, some quotes for some great illustrators here. Zeke, Fred, Zara. Yeah, check it out. The link will be in my bio to, to cop that one if you want it. This huge book right here is uh, Ronald Wimberley's Prince of Cats. Originally when it came out, it was a lot smaller, um, I believe. And this is like the large version of it, which is monumental. It's huge. If you haven't seen this comic, I would say it's probably for teenagers, you know, probably 14 and up or adults. But this is a really dope, dope comic. He takes, you know, elements of ninja or samurai culture and mixes it with hip hop and 70s and 80s New York culture and then mixes that with, you know, the classic Romeo and Juliet. And I love it. I love this book, what he did with it. Just such beautiful detail and story, like the way he flipped it. This is an old book now, but it's still, still just as good. Like this, for example, back in the day, they would have uh, the source before it became a magazine was like a zine like this. And he made it kind of look like that, like some of the old music zines, except this is all about the samurai. I love the way Ron uses um, color and gesture and the way he draws black folks. It's just incredible details. You see dude with the pager and his sword and the sisters. It's just really dope. You know, you get really, really gorgeous colors. I love how in this story, he just kind of went for it. Just beautiful, beautiful colors. Just say there's some nudity in this book as well. Just a heads up. And in the back of the book, there's uh, a little bit more where he talks about himself. And there's some sketches. It's really dope. I love this. Like seeing his his planning, his thinking, his drawing for making these books, some of the ink work. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a really, really dope book to get. That's it, y'all. I hope you enjoy this art video. Share it with someone. Try to encourage young people to make art and be creative and to read for fun. A lot of these books have a lot of images, but also lots of words, too. So share them. Peace.